In this session, I am going to talk about range of fermentation process. The fermentation process is widely used for the production of wide variety of compounds industrially. So these compounds are generally classified into six, biomass, enzymes, metabolites, transformation products, recombinant products, and biofuels. As I discussed earlier, the bioprocess technology and fermentation technology, both these terms are used interchangeably. Even though there is a difference between these terms, we use it interchangeably. So this classification is also applicable for the bioprocess technology. And this is a very broad classification. And I am going to give details of each of these categories. First one is biomass. We all are familiar with the biomass. The industrial production of biomass is for the two different categories. First one is the industrial production of yeast. The production of yeast is very important for the baking industry and the brewing industry. They are the organisms which convert this glucose and sucrose into the alcohol and loaf production. It is also the organism. So the bulk production of yeast is used in these industries. Second type of biomass which is industrially produced is single cell proteins. I am sure that you are very familiar with the single cell protein in your MVM biotechnology portions. And the single cell protein is used as a feedstock for animals and a food for humans. It can be used as a food. Next category is enzymes. Enzymes can be produced from plants, animals and microorganisms. But the enzyme produced using the fermentation technology is of special interest. One thing is that using fermentation technology of microorganism, we can produce huge amount of enzymes in very short duration and economically. Another thing is that when compared to plant and animals, the microorganism can be genetically modified. So the genetically modified organism will produce improved enzymes like synthetic biology and it can also produce enzymes in huge quantities. If we think about examples like amylase, which is used in the uh, like brewing industry and baking industry for the cut down of large sugar starch into glucose and maltose and then protease is used in detergent industry and you might have seen the glucose oxidase in the form of glucose detection kits the small equipment the aqua check equipment which use the glucose oxidase as a enzyme to sense the amount of glucose in the blood next one is metabolites microorganisms produce two different type of metabolites uh, based on their growth curve. I'm sure you are very familiar with the growth curve. In a typical growth curve of a batch, batch culture of microorganism has a lag phase, low phase, stationary phase and a decline phase. Microorganisms generally produce metabolites in log and stationary phase. The metabolites produced in log phase is called the primary metabolites and these primary metabolites are like directly linked to the central metabolic pathway of the organism the glycolysis, the Krebs cycle and their byproducts or side products of this central metabolic pathway. So it is also called also called as central metabolites. Examples like ethanol, organic acids, vitamins and amino acids are these primary metabolites and these primary meta metabolites are growth related. The amount of metabolites production increases with the growth of microorganism and it is produced in the log phase. And this log phase is also called the trophophase mostly in the industrial microbiology or fermentation technology books. Next phase is stationary phase, which is also called EDO phase. The secondary metabolites are produced in stationary phase. The secondary metabolites are not directly related to the central metabolic pathway of the microorganism. So these are not absolutely required for the growth and survival of microorganism. So these secondary metabolites are also called special metabolites and these special metabolites has some special abilities like antibacterial activity, like antibiotics, antibiotics as a class of secondary metabolites, then enzyme inhibitors and growth promoters. All of them are produced in stationary phase. They are secondary metabolites and they are industrially very important. This category is transformation products. Transformation products, one compound is transformed into structurally related but functionally divergent valuable products, value added products. This transformation can be done chemically, but when we are doing it chemically, the positional specificity and stereospecificity is low. And further, uh, when 
another advantage of bio transformation is like we can use low temperature and pressure we don't need to go to the extreme conditions for the bio transformation bio transformation can be done by living cells or dead cells or by enzymes uh, one classical example of bio transformation is conversion of ethanol into the acetic acid and the example can be the production of semi synthetic penicillin they are bio transformation transforming one compound into another compound next category of products are recombinant products you must have know this recombinant dna technology thing we have two different types of dna from two different sources and we are combining it to a single dna called recombinant dna which is not naturally seen and using this technology we can produce variety of proteins easily and most of these recombinant dna products are high value low volume products and used in pharmaceutical industry so in pharmaceutical industry recombinant products are mainly used in three different ways first one is for protein replacement therapy if any person is having diabetes type 1 diabetes especially they are not able to produce insulin so what we do we make bacteria to produce insulin and this insulin is used to replace the insulin in a diabetic patients same thing goes for the protein factor h which is absent in the hemophilia patients so we can produce it in recombinant way and give it to a patient so the in the patient the protein is absent we are producing it in a bacteria and give it at a ph pharmaceutical second one is therapeutic agents uh, like interferons which is produced recombinant using recombinant dna technology and it is used for the treatment of cancer and uh, as an antiviral agent maybe the tissue plasminogen activator is also a therapeutic agent and third category is vaccines vaccines like recombinant bcg vaccine photon mouth disease rdna vaccines and influenza dna vaccines are all are recombinant products and it's always the classical example is human insulin production we take the human pancreatic cells and isolate the rna then produce the dna and we combine this dna the insulin producing genes dna to a bacterial plasmid and produce a recombinant dna this recombinant dna is then transferred into a bacteria host bacteria then selection screening and everything we after that we will grow it in bulk quality using industrial fermentation technology and we will produce human insulin for the therapeutic purposes for the diabetic patients and everything the final category is biofuels biofuels can be solid liquid or gaseous biomass is a solid fuel liquid fuel including biodiesel biopetrol bioethanol biobutanol etc then we have gaseous fuels biogas biohydrogen biomethane these are the this all for today thank you so much for listening thank you